Good evening and welcome to Laughing Monkey Music. Today we have on the notorious Andy McCoy. How are you doing today? Uh, I'm all right. I'm chilling, been painting, playing guitar, working on a new album. Uh, you know, this COVID pulled back a lot of gigs. I was supposed to play the US, Canada, South America about five days before the first gigs in Japan. They closed the borders. So. Just been kind of hanging out, you know, what else can you do? Painting a lot and writing songs, being in the studio, got to do something, you know. Well, those are all good things. It's a good use of your time, though. So when, you, when, it, when it does open up, you can go out and tour. Than 22 years on heroin. <laughs> That's something I did when I was younger. I thought uh, this more of a healthy choice. <laughs> it, it is, and, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm pleased that you've, you've survived. I'm aware of that. You're just yeah, pretty... that ain't that funny, because all my buddies died. All my, well, Slash has got a pacemaker, but I'm all healthy. I'm all real. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Let's talk about your, well, a couple things. We'll start with your, your art um, mm -hmm. that you have going on. It, yeah, it's, it's great. It's, a, lo a lot of musicians actually are, are also artists, which is a, such a fantastic Time. Yeah, I come from that art school background. A lot of the British way guys did. Yeah, exactly. And, and uh, I kind of dropped out of it when I started touring actively, which I did for uh, 30 plus years. And I didn't, don't mean like touring like the Stones, have a tour every four or five years. Uh, I was basically on the road all the time. Yeah, you were in the dugouts, you were clubbing it, you were playing the shows, you were everywhere. Yeah, theaters, clubs, stadiums, lives, whatever came, you know, they're all gigs and every gig can be your last gig. So you gotta do your best, you know? It is, and even more so nowadays, with everyone's passing in the past two years, it's been a rough two years for everybody. But your yeah. art, let's talk about what is your inspiration? What would you call that style? It's well, uh, <laughs> well, obviously it's pop art, but it's mixed right. with classical, uh, classical um, education and with surrealistic features. I was lucky enough to meet Salvador Dali once, and I hung out some with Andy Warhol at the factory, and once upon a time, and uh, learned a lot. And uh, actually, probably more from them than from school and a lot of other artists. I think Ronnie Wood is a fantastic artist, very underestimated. Yes. He is actually, you're right. Because I, I do, I do. At the same time, Paul Stanley's selling paintings for God knows how much. I uh, don't think much of his art, but that's only my personal point of view. Someone might, else might love it. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder, right? Yeah, it's actually very good. I mean, art is very Individual. personal. Yeah, yes. nice uh, regular, you see that? Yep. The steps and, uh, and I do, uh, me and my daughter just had a hat show of painted hats and I do all kinds of things, artistic. Like, why do they put borders on music anyway? A rock and roll, R&B, soul, blues period whatever you know uh it's all good music will always be good music whether it's bebop uh or uh it's chamber music you can hear if it's from the heart you know what i mean i i, I know you mean it. i, I hate borders. borders i hate borders. I, I, I get that i get that but i think on a big i hate also... borders between countries as well <laughs> i know i know but like but on the topic of that, like I would say, when I could say rock and roll, I would actually use the example. I did this, and I just did the other day. I said, when I say rock what and roll, I'm to you, may I ask? I'll, I'll tell you. From Bill Haley, it could be to Testament. That, that shall be, be stolen music of the I'm, Afro American. I'm using it. I'm, oh, you're killing me. I'm saying that time period of music from the 50s up is rock yeah, to me. Well, he's if you have guitars here, right? and drums. That movie, I can't deny it. What was the movie called? We'd rock around the clock. Uh, oh, it was Bill Haley uh, in the comments. The, um, ah, I don't, I don't remember now. Yeah, but you, you all remember them. That's how why this song became a hit. 
and all of Europe was waiting for this like a uh, big rock and roll star. Out comes a chubby old country singer. It was a bit of a disappointment, you know. And oh. uh, but then we got into Little Richard, and we got into yep. the real screaming Jay Hawkins, all that stuff, Howling Wolf. But but that's um, what I'm saying. It's it's um, it's, it's a different chord. You know, that's the corazón, mi amigo. Comprende? Yes. <laughs> I, I, I do agree. I do agree on that part. I just, I'm saying, for me, rock and roll is guitars, drums, bass, vocals. Yeah, you don't, don't need more. And I mean, if you got a good song, sometimes the more you add to it, sometimes it takes away more from yeah. the original idea of a great song. Like, some of the Prince's stuff. Think of Dove's Crime. Mm -hmm. He does no bass, which is unheard of in a mega hit. And right. I love it because it does not need it. It's no, perfection. It is perfection. Yeah. You, and you have a new album you're working on, right? It's not ready yet, is it? Yeah, 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 it's ready. It's my first cover album. It's called going to be called Jukebox Junkie Volume 1. My main idea is that I'll do a solo album in between each, and I'll do three of these albums of songs I listened to when I was young. I mean, I made a list of like 68 songs. Wow. My manager was like, <laughs> Andy. You're mad. You're going to be in the studio over a year. Uh, and you have like a 12-album set. Uh, so we decided on cutting it down. We recorded some, I think, 17 roughly tracks, 18 maybe. At the least 16. And thereabouts anyway. One of those three. I'm not going to hold you accountable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to choose like an album out of it. And it's songs I grew up with. Some are not known, but songs I always wanted to be big hits. And they should have been, most of them, but due to lack of promotion, bad PR, perhaps bad management, bad distribution, Nothing happened to these songs. But, you know, I was a real jukebox junkie. I went through, I bought record after record, sometimes just by the cover. Sometimes yeah. I'd hit the bullseye and get a great record. A lot of times it would be like shooting myself in the head. <laughs> you know what I mean? I it still don't get be... records that way. I go secondhand shop. I'll do it still. Yeah, yeah, I, still, I, still do do it. That. I search for new music all the time. I think um, a lot of the newer stuff is harder to play in the record player than the way it's produced. The older stuff is better, sonically. Yeah, you know? yeah. Well, uh, my vibe is that people with too many instruments nowadays, they double too much, they trigger too much on the drums and stuff. Like my new album, there's no triggers on the drums. Got a great room, great drum sound. Why would I manipulate it? Uh, no. Well, live drums is my favorite sound ever, like on an album. Live yeah, that's drums. What I'm striving for with this album. A lot of the tracks are actually played live, the background. Yeah, the vocals being put on, but mainly one take, two takes. Nice. And I wanted it to be as live as possible. Because I was working uh, quite a while again with Mike Monroe and it became overdub and on overdub. He likes that stuff, which is okay. I mean, but it's not my cup of tea. I want it to sound like people hear it live. Well, that's, I'm a, it's gonna be a club. I like the idea of the concept of, of, of songs that are maybe not popular that you're doing as covers. That's yeah. actually yeah, a really fresh idea. On, on unknown tracks, there'll be a few music buffs who will know some of the songs, but I bet there'll be a few songs that'll surprise everyone that nobody's heard of. That's Why? The best. Don't blame me. I'm trying to be the 
the large voice now to give this song <laughs> a second chance. You know what I mean? I got a good heart. Mucho corazón, mi amigo. Growing up, that's the best thing you do when you get an album. You, you say, "Who's who inspired this artist?" And you keep you start deep diving. You know, damn right, damn right. Couldn't agree with you more there. No and that, argument. That'll be, no, and, and that will be what your album will do to people too. You know, they hear that, they hear the original, hear yours, and they're like, "Oh, who's this?" You know. Yeah, little Richard. Is it still? He passed away too, didn't he? Hmm. Yeah, he did. I told my wife, somebody's cat calling on you again. She looks over, she says, no, it's for you, man. And I see little Richard in a limo on Hollywood Boulevard. I was like, oh my God, I'm going to meet him day after tomorrow because he was working with this New York band called The Throbs, if you remember. Yeah, I do. Brother. So I have a question about your, your actually your painting. Do you do just acrylic and canvas type painting, or do you, have you actually do like watercolors? I, I use nail polish. I use whatever. I use sand. I use nature's so elements of nature, and uh, I don't really put any borders. I think it's wrong to put borders on art in itself because. Art should be a free expression. Um, it has to reflect the soul. When Charlie passed away now, bless his soul, yeah, Charlie Watts. Yeah. I met him the first time, the same night I met my wife at the LA Forum. Wow. I just made a painting of him and I decided I can't sell it. I have to send it to his wife or daughter. I think it's a special thing. It means something to you on a different level, you know? Yeah, yeah. It goes to an emotional level and it goes to history. You've got to remember that the stones have been around for two months longer than I have lived. Um, when I was a teenager, the stones were the thing. They were the best looking band and they didn't play bloody heavy metal. They were a rock and roll band and they played reggae. I grew up in a very West Indian atmosphere. So I was used to blue beat. I grew up with early reggae. I met Bob Marley before he was anybody. Saw him the last time on the last tour and Joe Higgs, all these Jamaican guys were friends of mine. Is that I play into songwriting make, too? I couldn't make paintings of him. I don't want to cash out on dead people like some people do, you know. I made one of Johnny, but I gave it away as a present to his daughter in yeah. Stockholm. Yeah. That's probably best, you know. Well, you're, some you're... people have morals. Nicky Six is none. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. I know there's, yeah, there's a, there's that. <laughs> yeah. There's been a long, a long story history, you know. Yeah, I say this life and the stories I've heard about how I say this life, beat him with a baseball bat, you think he'd be alive? I yeah. hadn't heard that one yet. I used to play baseball as a kid, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you could hit somebody. Yeah, I, that's a new one from me. I've heard that heard that that one yet from him. Oh, he was spreading around the room of that one. I I saved his life from a smack overdose. All right. right, and he started spreading rumors that I threw him in a garbage pan and can one of these big ones in London, where we went to the smack dealers and in the council flats, tenements in the USA. Yeah. You call them, you know. Pretty ghetto is actual real ghetto one. I told the dude, Nicky, this is strong. You ain't used to it. I am. I did my hit. I was, whoa, this is chill. I'm all right. This die goes blue. Took us an hour, me and the dealer, to wake him up. Got him in a cab. But he's and get to got him to his hotel. Okay. He spread around a story that I intentionally gave him an OD, 
threw him in the trash, beat him up with a baseball bat like he'd be alive. That guy's from a farm somewhere in Seattle. I'm from the inner city. If I want to kill someone, I'll make sure I do it. Thank God I haven't had to do it to this day. Because there was one promise I made myself when I was very young, because growing up in the heart of the city is different from the countryside, was that I want to live this life without any blood on my hands. I might have color here, but <laughs> no blood. And I try well, to hold that, hold that promise to myself. I think it's the only promise I made myself ever. When you're writing songs and you're doing music, it all feels like it's almost the same. It's just a different way for you to create. Is that kind of how it works I mean, for you, like inspiration-wise? I don't think I have write them. They just come. It's like the art. It's like I have an antenna. and I go on free flow. Okay. Um, I don't know where it's going to end up. I want a comprehensive story to some point, but sometimes I like to leave it a bit surrealistic because that makes the listeners' brains move and everybody gets a different picture of what I'm singing about. A lot of times I try to write a lyric that has three or four meanings, depending on how you look at it. And of course, sometimes they're straight in the face. Um, it's really all about playing with words. My friend David Bowie, rest in peace, he was a lovely bloke, funny South London bloke. Uh, taught me this method of cutting, um, excuse me, spliff. Taught me this method of cutting lines and throwing them in the air, picking them up at random, putting them back together, and then making sense out of them by changing a few words. I've used that a few times, and it works. Not every that's time, though. No, but that's a really nice twist to it, too, because, I mean... Well, DB taught that to me, yeah. And I like that. I'll always be grateful to him for that. So you actually do. It, it, it is your art, your music. It's all art in its sense. Yeah, I've sounds. never done anything else. I, but it's I an extensive. Make, I made yeah. my first record when I was 13. Come on. I was touring actively when I was 15. Wow. I, I did a lot of things before Hanoi Rocks. And then Hanoi Rocks happened and it went real big, real fast. And it died real fast because of Russell. Yeah. And because I basically gave up, I quit everything. I was sober. But when Russell died in Hollywood, where we were staying, I ordered an ounce of smack and I just dwelled in my misery for some 20 years. Wow. Picked the pieces up together again. And here I am, happy and alive and totally healthy. Well, I'm, I'm glad you are. I'm glad you're producing yeah. and I'm glad you, you know, I'm glad we can just talk because. <laughs> you know, it'd be a waste. I mean, you've created it. Like, even like you said early on, you know, before you even did solo with, with, with Hanoi, your, your songwriting was fantastic. I remember, you know, here in Hanoi Rocks, you know, at your yeah, age in high school. I am almost a songwriter and a lead guitar player when it comes to music. Of course, when it comes to painting, I draw and I paint. That's what painters do. You can't really elaborate on that like you can do in music. Right? Are you a chef too? American, Thai, Italian. Yeah. God, it does. It's a peer. I To me, making food is an art form. And it can be very erotic. It can be very sensual. Yeah. Depending on what you make. <laughs> <laughs> Point <laughs> <clear>. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. But it, it, see, like, it doesn't surprise me that you are a good cook, that that's one of your, you know, another thing you, you dive into, I you know. I enjoy it. I enjoy the spices. You know, I was three years in India, hanging out, just living there and didn't really do much. Uh, smoked a lot of charas. And I learned about the spices. I hung out with the locals because I became a local. Yeah. And um, I learned a lot. Um, 
the best way to learn is to hang out with the real people, you know, taking a course, it might do something, I suppose, but being there is a different piece of cake. Mm -hmm. Do you see it right in front of you? And they do it with such primitive equipment that one really starts to feel spoiled. I'm a Western child. I was a child, a Western child. Now I'm a Western man. I'm used to all the accommodities we can yeah. get. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I was joking. So you've done other stuff. Other, your, your heart of drugs are just as... <laughs> if I could be junk food, like I you'd be heroin. Understand. If people can't understand... Yeah. And, you know, it's always going to be around. But it does not interest me. I did it a few, um, a few years ago. And I realized how nostalgia begills memories. I remembered smack taking every worry away. All it made. And I know where to get it this second. But am I interested? No, sir. I have the money. I have it all. I have the connections. They don't ever go away. But... I'm not yeah. interested. I'm not interested. Good. You know, look what you can do when you don't do it. No, I was saying if I could give a junk yeah, food, like you, know, you, like you gave a heroin, I'd be great. It becomes a bitch because everyone around you is worried, everyone close to your heart. You're not worried, of course, because you feel great while you're on it. But there's always the danger, you know. It happened to me what, twice. Uh, fatal ODs. And once I remember it was in LA and the a really pretty cop lady comes up to me. Did you try and commit suicide? You have such a beautiful house, beautiful cars. Uh, why would you use? I was just like, you killed my high you. That's the attitude you get, you know. And then I locked myself in for a few years. I didn't even work. I had money. Why would I need friends? I had a friend called Henry, even though he came in powder form. It isolates you, it estranges you. It's negative, period. It's not a good thing. It's a hell of a hook. The best thing was the morning I woke up and realized everyone's dead. I'm quitting this. It took a while to quit it. But it was worth it. Well, you're a dad, you're a husband too. You got a lot to um, offer, you know? You got other people in your life too. You to well, those are just responsibilities that come with age, I suppose, but I don't think of myself that way. <laughs> I think of myself as the individual I am. For bad or for the better, you know? I don't know. So everybody's got an opinion. And I'm not really concerned with other people's opinions. I just want to do my art and live a happy life. Well, and hopefully gonna... spread some happiness to what I do. Because that's what I wanted in the first place, was to spread good vibes. Yeah. Well, with the virus opening and closing, it seems like sometimes over in over Finland, it seems like you guys get to play more. Uh, are there plans for you? Are there plans for you to on and off, on and off, but most of EU is slacking on them. This is mm -hmm. this has been fun having you on the show. I want, you know, it's been my pleasure talking to you. Hey, I expected some Mr. Know It All, and I met a gentleman.